Good morning, and welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm Tim Roberts, the pastor here, and welcome for those who are joining online. Uh, we're so glad that you're able to join us to get, uh, today as we worship and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, today is a special Sunday. It's World Communion Sunday. Uh, we will be doing communion by intention, but also if you would like, uh, or if you still don't feel quite safe with that, there are the uh, pre-filled uh, communion sets that's right over here where you can pick up the uh, where you picked up the bulletin you can get those if you like uh, in your bulletin as you open it up you'll see a place that it is folded in and on one side it says welcome guests and members please let us know you've been here today especially our guest if you are our guest today just let us know uh, that you've been here let us know a little bit of information about you so we can get some information about first out to you and if you're our guest, this is the only gift that, you, that we ask. As you open this up fully, you'll see on the back side a place for any prayer concerns that you would like to share with the church and or me. Uh, if you would like for everybody to be in prayer with you this week, please check the box about halfway down. If you do not check that box, I'm going to treat it as confidential, and it will remain just between you and me. And for those who are joining online, just send me an email or you can put it in the uh, comment sections of the video and we'll make sure to include that uh, in our prayer concerns. Also, I just got a couple of announcements. We well, actually just have one announcement I have to make. Two weeks from today, we're having a Grief Share preview. Grief Share is a, uh, is a program that we're beginning here that it's, it's kind of a support group where it will help you move through the different stages of grief. We've all had uh, suffered uh, some loss in the last couple of years. And so if you are still struggling, you don't have to be alone. Uh, we have a couple of people, Joey Lockman and uh, Jane Finger, who will be leading this session. If you want to know more about it, we will have the preview two weeks from today here in the sanctuary at 3 o'clock. So if you'd like to, any, info more, any more information, just ask me or Joey or Jane, and we can give you a little bit more information about that. And brothers and sisters, that's the announcements I have. I uh, do want to update you on one uh, prayer concern. Sherry Garner was in the hospital earlier this week for... Uh, a condition that we're still not quite sure what was going on, but she is home. I talked to her just a little while ago. She's not feeling quite up to herself yet, but please keep her in your prayers. Are there any prayer con other prayer concerns you'd like to uh, mention? Well, brothers and sisters, this is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Please stand with me as we turn in our bulletins to the call to, call to worship. All around the world, people gather to break bread and pour wine. All around the world, the broken body is made whole. All around the world, the banquet of God is prepared for the table. Let us worship together. Let us share God's bounty. And let us continue standing as we turn in our hymn, though, to hymn number 617, I Come With Joy. And now let us continue to stand as we say what we believe, as we recite together the modern affirmation, which is page 885 in your handle, also in your bulletin. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is above all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit, as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in our time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth.
Thank you. you. May be seated. And as you do, send your children down down for time, mostly for children. Come over here and sit with me. We have to sit on that. Come over here and sit with me. Come over here. Come on up here with me. Come here. Don't block the camera. Okay. I don't have a lot of stuff to. I don't have a sermon. We're glad to see you. Glad to see you. I'm going to ask you some questions. You know, you come down, we come every Sunday, we see you come down, and you say, well, that's so-and-so's grandson, or that's so-and-so's son. What's your name? Owen. Owen. Cretch. Owen Cretch. What's your name? Tatiana. Tatiana. Good for you. Okay. How old are you? Ten. Ten. Whoa. How old are you? Ten. Hey. I was ten one time. <laughs> Y'all were, too. Where you go to school? Blackburn Elementary. Hey, that's hey. I know about Blackburn. I worked up there. Where you go? To Massey Elementary. I was the head custodian at Massey for ten years. I know about Massey. What's your favorite subject in school? What do you like the best? Science. What do you like? Reading. Reading. Okay. You know, we sit in the congregation and we see you on Sunday and we think. Oh, boy, we'll watch them and they'll grow up. You know, sometimes I think, I wish I was like you instead of you like me. Uh, you know anything about Afghanistan? No. You know anything about Afghanistan? Nope. How about the infrastructure bill? You know anything about that? No. How about you know anything about the infrastructure bill? Uh, nope. Oh, that's good. That's a good thing. You know how you can just... I watch these preschool children that come out on every day and they come out and sit on the sidewalk and they push and they shove and they pinch and they laugh and they giggle and they run and they can't be still. And they'll tell me their name every day. Every one of them, they want to tell you their name. And they go down the sidewalk and I think to myself... Maybe we need to be like that a little bit. Maybe we need to run. And, when's the last time you skipped a little bit or ran a little bit? Just for fun. When's the last time you, and I say this every time, when's the last time you laughed out loud? Just bent over laughing. Yesterday, good for you. See, you can do it. I can't. I don't, I don't remember the last time I has had a good laugh, you know. Everything's pretty serious. This morning you laughed? Yeah. Good for you. i tell you what we're going to do. Sometimes, and I'm guilty, I'm not very thankful a lot of times. At my age, I, I'm very thankful. I'm still able to do and go about what I want to do. So, maybe we need to sing a little bit. Uh, something we know. How about that? I want to tell you one more tale. One more tale and I'll hush. About seven percent. I went to stop and got me a cold cola this week. I was working. He didn't put beer in this, but it's cold cola. And I gave me this little old brown bag. I hadn't seen one in a long time. Use uses plastic. When I was a little boy, Living in high shows. My daddy worked on the railroad. Mama was a nurse in the mill. Daddy was gone all week. He'd come in on Friday. We'd go to Archie Baker's store. Dad, give me a quarter. 
And I go up that little old candy counter, get that glass in front of it, and start picking out what a, and I get one of them little old bags full for a quarter. Mary Jane's, everybody remember Mary Jane's? BB Bats. And they came out with Tootsie Pops. Boy, that was great. Had that candy on the end of a stick. That was great stuff. Every once in a while, if you give me an extra nickel, I'd get me one of them. Old good old Mellow Cup. Every Christmas, my daddy would go over to the store and buy a big old box of candy. He'd come in just candy and nuts and out of what all. And he'd hide it. And on Christmas morning, we'd open up whatever we had. And he'd say, I had a brother. And he'd say, oh, boy, see if you can find that candy. And we'd look at it. It gave him the most joy for us to look for that box of candy. He had had it hid somewhere different every year. About three years before we passed away, we are out at the house and had Christmas. And Daddy was sitting at the chair. He had quadruple bypass surgery at 82 years old. He said, Christmas not done yet, boys. I was 50 some years old. He said, you got to look for your candy. He never forgot it. And we found it. It was under the bed. We found it. Okay, we're going to stand. And we're going to praise God and praise this country. Stand, we're going to sing God Bless America. And sing it loud now so God can hear you and your country can hear you. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean wide with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america my home sweet home you can clap you want to amen thank you both you bear a very important part of this church and don't ever forget it hallelujah
About four weeks ago, we began a new series called uh, Ten Habits of Holy Living. And in this series, you are invited to take one of these uh, journals for daily journal for daily transformation. If you haven't picked one up, you can still pick some up. I think we've got about ten left. We've got some right here and also in the back. And in these, there are, each week you get the insert for the subject of today and to follow it up, a daily prayer, a daily reading of scripture and some meditation questions and a place for you to journal your thoughts on the subject. You don't want to actually have to answer the questions that are posed to you. Those are just for you to think about but just your thoughts for today. And I pray and hope that you are using this to help uh, make some of these things that we're talking about over the, these weeks, these 10 weeks, real habits. It takes several weeks to form a habit, but it only takes about two days to lose a habit. And we have a lot of habits that we do each and every day that are not so healthy or not healthy spiritual-wise, but there are some things that we could pick up and make us grow closer to God, to be more like the creatures that God has intended us for to be. And we continue that today with our fourth in this series. And our scripture of folks today comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 19. I invite you to stand as you hear these words. When, G when the hour came and Jesus and his apostles reclined at a table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this, divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's go to God in prayer. And so I invite you to hold your hands out, palms up, as we assume a, a posture of expectancy and pray this prayer with me. Lord, I offer myself to you. Open my ears to hear and my heart to receive all you have for me today. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So if you looked at your bulletin today, you noticed that today's subject is sacraments. That's our holy habit that we're looking to uh, put into our lives. But let me ask you, does, does anybody have a good idea or can give me a good definition of the word sacrament? Anybody want to try? A sacred action. That's a good, that's a good definition there. Usually when I ask this question, people will, will name things like communion or baptism or, or uh, confession. It, usually it's easier to give examples of what or of of sacraments than we are at defining the word and i love that uh definition you gave me a, a sacred action the word itself is derived from the latin word sacramentum which roughly translate as holy mystery Well, that doesn't help us a whole lot, does it? I mean, after 2,000 years of theologizing, it appears the best that we can come up to try to define this term that we're trying to make a holy habit, that it's a mystery. Well, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, 
set our doctrinal understanding of it as this. He, didn't, he wasn't satisfied with just holy mystery. He said a sacrament is a means of grace. When he went on to, des to describe it a little bit more, he said it's an outward invisible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. So it's something that we do. It's something that can be seen. And it's something that happens within us. Now, throughout Christianity, denominations on, uh, have varied on the number of sacraments that they observe, such as our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters have seven sacraments. I believe uh, they have baptism, the Eucharist, confirmation, uh, marriage, it, unction, which is the uh, uh, anointing of the sick, also last rites. Confession, did I say that? I didn't say confession. Well, confession's one, and there's ordination. Did I say that? Okay, ordination. So I believe that's the seven right there. So we got these seven that the Roman Catholics look at. But United Methodists, we don't see all seven of those. We only see and recognize two acts or two acts of means of grace as being sacraments those being baptism and communion so what makes something a sacrament and, and how is it that we our roman catholics who are who've been around a whole lot longer than we have have all of these that we but we only say there's two well as we understand them these are acts that were instituted by Jesus as a way of bestowing God's grace. But it's also something that Jesus commanded his followers to do, to continue. So the first one that we talked about was baptism, which kind of sounds strange once you understand the way we understand baptism as United Methodists. And the reason I say that is because as Methodists teaches us, there, we believe in one baptism. Unlike many of our Protestant siblings, we believe that we are baptized only once. Now, I know that some of you may have been baptized many times before, and if you've been in some bat Baptist churches, a lot of churches will baptize you as soon as you join that church. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized somewhere else. When you join that church, you're baptized. But we don't look at it that way because we see baptism as all about an act of God pouring out this amazing grace on us. And it's something that God does and not something that we do. It's not, it's not the act of us seeking. So it's all about what God does and not what we do. So when we baptize once, we say that God poured his grace upon us at that moment or that we recognize God's grace is always with us and we don't need to do it over and over again because God has not stopped loving us. Well, with that being the case, you, you might say, well, if we only baptize once, how do we make this a holy habit because we don't do it over and over again? Well, we do do it by doing this. We participate in the baptism of others. And we, from time to time, go through a reaffirmation of our baptism. You see, we baptize at whatever age. We baptize babies. Because, once again, it's about what God does and not about us confessing our sins. It's about God saying, I love you from the very beginning. And if you look through our baptismal liturgy, you see that we reaffirm our baptismal vows during that time as well. And from time to time within the church, we will come and we will touch the water. We may touch the water, make a sign of the cross on our head, or some people just wet their head with it. Some people will just touch it and be thankful, and we remember God's love. Now, we do this through this curious term that probably not a whole, of you, a whole lot of you are familiar with, but 
helps explain a bit more this mystery of sacraments. And this term is called anamnesis. Now let me spell that for you. Because it's not amnesia. It's not the same thing. Anamnesis. A-N-A-M-N-E-S-I-S. Now if you remember, amnesia means you forget. Anamnesis means that you are actively engaged in remembering. Now let's take just a few moments and think about something. How do we normally go about remembering something? If I were asked to ask you to remember your graduation, either your high school graduation, your college graduation, your graduation from kindergarten, how would you remember it? You would probably start forming some mental image in your mind, right? I mean, that's the way I am. I, I, I think through things and I see the pictures. And as I do that, I might start remembering some of the things said, and the, the dialogues that, were, that, were, uh, that took place. And as you uh, think about it more, you may go out and dig out some pictures and look at those and make spur some more memories. But if you think about that, the extent of that kind of remembering is a passive recollection. But that's not anamnesis. With anamnesis, it, it, it's, we relive the act to the extent that we Act, actively participate in the event all over again. So if we were to engage in anamnesis about our graduation, we would once again put on the robe. We would once again put on the cap. We would once again uh, go through the, all the pomp and circumstance of the ceremony. We may even have a graduation party afterwards again. But we don't do that very often. And we probably don't see that very often, but here's something that you may have been a part of or you may have seen. How about with um, marriage vow renewals? You know, some people will, on their anniversary, will take out and look at the pictures and they will remember. And that's that passive recollection. But with anamnesis, they once again stand before God and their family and friends and they take those vows of marriage all over again. So let's use this ununderstanding of anamnesis about baptism. I said we would put out the font and you go and you touch the water once again. And you feel that water surround you and know that something's happening, that something is not quite the same as everything else. And, and you take it and you put it on your head and you're actively re-engaging in that moment of baptism. And the same happens in communion. Just a few moments ago, we read and we heard Luke's gospel uh, about the account where Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples on the night before his crucifixion. But do you remember that last line that was said? It says, do this in remembrance of me. And when you think about it through anamnesis, we see that the do this is just as crucial as the in remembrance of me. This is why our, our liturgy, in our liturgy for this, we participate the very activity of communion. We take the bread. We give thanks to God and we break the bread. We share the bread. We, we take the cup and again we give thanks to God and we share the cup. Now, some Christian traditions consider communion as a memorial meal in which uh, participants merely remember the story. But with our understanding, we are part of that. We're not just recalling the event that happened some two millennia ago. We actually share in the meal with 
with the other disciples and with the real presence that Jesus is with us. So today is World Communion Sunday. That means that Christians throughout the world will all be gathering and and sharing this one common meal where Jesus took something very common and made it extraordinary. He took ordinary bread, ordinary wine, and made it something so much more. And we get to be a part of that once again. We're not asking you to just hear me tell that story. We're asking you to once again come, hold your hands, and know that the bread that is put in your hand is the body of Christ which is broken for the world. And then as you take that bread and you put it in the, the chalice, that's the blood of Christ for the redemption of the world. And then as you consume it, that, that you are part of something that's been going on for 2,000 years, then that has not stopped. It was not a one-time event. It is something that you're able to participate in, to make a habit, to, to do this once a month, or as, as Wesley would say, every time we gather, to stop. And to remember. If you can't do it then, then you can do it every time that you, before you take a meal. I mean, before you eat a meal. This is the whole concept of praying a blessing over a meal. It's not just to ask God to bless the foods for the nourishments of our body. It is a part of, once again, remembering Jesus took the bread. He took the cup. And he shared it with us. Giving us something we didn't deserve. But we desperately need, need. So I invite you to join with me as we turn in our hymnals to page number 12, I believe, as we go through the liturgy for this sacrament of Holy Communion. So my brothers and sisters, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and to seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to take just a moment to pray a prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer of confession, a prayer of intercession. My brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now we turn to page 13 with the th great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. We lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might. Hosanna, whatever glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, people just like you and me, and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God. And then he shared the cup by saying, Take and drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood poured out for the remission of sins for you and for all. Whenever you drink this, remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with, uh, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is the Lord's table. It is not mine. It is not this church's. It is not United Methodist Church. It does not matter if you are a member of this church or if you're a member of any church. All that matters is that you want to grow closer to Jesus and that you want to receive this amazing gift of love. As Doug comes down, I invite you to uh, prepare yourself as we uh, come in for the time of intention. You will be given a piece of bread to which you would then take the bread and uh, move over uh, to Doug and you will dip the bread in the cup and you'll be able to consume both. You'll be invited to, to uh, spend some time at the altar if you'd like. Uh, and after that, uh, you may return to your seats. And if you would like to get one of the cups, you may do so during this time as well.
Now, my brothers and sisters, let us all stand as we close out this time of worship with hymn number 437, This Is My Song. And receive now this your benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you, give us all, give the world his peace. Go in peace. Amen.